Welcome everybody to another episode of the RF Viewpoint. John and this is the second of four episodes that I wanted to put together to answer the question what is VRF? In the first episode I did a summary talking briefly about the three portions of the system. You'll have the outdoor equipment, the indoor equipment, and then the connecting piping and valves. And so this episode is going to focus on the outdoor equipment. In that first video I went over just the basic uh, characteristics of the outdoor equipment I have them right here uh, number one that this is uh, based on heat pump technology um, namely it's refrigeration based it's going to run in heating as well as cooling modes um, in heating mode it will build frost and will need to defrost in the winter um, etc uh, second it's going to have variable capacity meaning a variable speed compressor or multiple variable speed compressors. Um, it will have variable speed fans and as I'm going to get into today it will also have uh, variable capacity coils outside. Uh, accumulators and receivers which ties back to the, the variable capacity. And these, these will hold um, additional refrigerant that's not used during you know par partial load and also, if there, are, if there are situations where we have liquid refrigerant going back, the accumulators can catch those before they you know, get pumped into the compressor. Um, and then we're also going to have oil return systems. Now, all of these are not like, let's build a system that has all these things. In, in reality, these outdoor systems have been built to answer the difficulties and the challenges that this type of system will face. And so, we have this outdoor system. So let's say we have a very simple system. Let's say it's a 12 ton condenser with four indoor units, which is pretty small tonnage and then pretty small in the number of indoor units. These can get much larger with dozens of indoor units. But for our sakes, for the sake of this video, let's just say that that's what we have. So this system um, can run in heating or cooling. And so I'll put up a graphic here. So let, let's say that we have this system running in cooling. Everything inside is running in cooling. Everything's calling for cooling. The outdoor unit becomes a, a condenser. It's going to be rejecting heat out of the system. And then the compressor will be running, you know, moving the refrigerant between the two. It'll be running at 100% most likely, depending on the load. Okay. In that situation, most of that variable capacity, most of the, that is not needed. Okay. And if that were the, the typical operation of the system, you probably wouldn't need VRF. But what happens when, let's say, one of those switches to heat? So we have three indoor units calling for cooling, and we have one indoor unit that's calling for heat. Well, we have enough heat to run that unit off of just the heat, the waste heat from the others. And so our compressor is probably going to slow down to about 75%. The outdoor coil is still going to run as a condenser, however, it's only going to run at about 50% capacity because that 25% is going back to that, that one three ton indoor unit. Okay, We get into an interesting, an interesting situation where let's say we have two indoor units that are in cooling mode and two indoor units that are in heating mode. You may, and this is, this is the ideal perfect heat recovery scenario where you have four indoor units, you're essentially doing 12 tons of heat pump heating and cooling. The compressor would run at approximately 50% capacity and the outdoor coil would be doing nothing, more or less. Now, that typically doesn't happen. I would usually pick a mode, heating or cooling. Um, and I'll put up a graphic here, talk about that more in a second. But you, you calculate the efficiency on that for me. You have a, a essentially a six ton compressor if it's running at half capacity doing 12 tons of work. You start to see how this heat recovery thing can start to be, to make a lot of sense. You're not losing the heat, you're not, you're not wasting it, you just move it around where it needs to be. So th this graphic, 
This is a graphic from, it, it's in Mitsubishi's R2 manuals, and it's basically describing how does the unit, how does the system decide on a mode. And so there's four main modes for Mitsubishi, you know, heat recovery VRF systems. Um, the two are simple, one is heating only and cooling only. However, you also have two heat recovery modes. One is mostly heating with some cooling called heating main, and one is mostly cooling with some heating called cooling main. And then there's this strip in the middle that I spoke about where you have, you know, perfect heat recovery essentially. And as it slips up and down this scale, as units come on, as they, as they cycle off, as the load in the building changes, it just seamlessly slips through these modes. Switches back and forth. Outdoor unit becomes a condenser when you need to reject heat. Outdoor unit becomes an evaporator when you need to pull in heat. And so, as I was saying, the purpose was not to build an outdoor unit that was this all this variable capacity. The purpose was to make VRF work. And as new generations of outdoor units come along, the improvements and the upgrades are always to make it run better, to, to address problems that become apparent as time goes on. And so you have variable speed compressors because maybe two units are calling for cooling and nothing's calling and, everything, and the other two units are off. And so the compressor needs to run at half speed. But you can't just have the compressor and the coil doing the same thing because in this scenario, compressor is half speed, you know, and the outdoor coil is running as a condenser ejecting heat. Well, if the other two units come on in heating mode, the outdoor coil needs to shut off, but the compressor stays doing what it's doing. If one indoor unit is calling for cooling and three need heat, I need the outdoor coil to pick up and absorb heat as an evaporator. And so we, ha we have this equipment that can seamlessly move back and forth. Well, your oil return does all sorts of crazy things when you're switching modes like that, when valves are clicking on and off and, you know, the coil goes from a high pressure to a low pressure and just, you know, just that quick. And so we have these advanced oil recovery schemes. We have these, these, these accumulators and receivers that hold extra refrigerant. As I mentioned in one of my other videos, uh, the amount of refrigerant in the accumulator changes depending on the mode you're in. Because certain modes, cooling modes, will tend to use more refrigerant, heating modes tend to use less. Um, and so you may look at one of these and open the panels and say, why are there so many valves? Why is there so much piping? Why is all this going on in here? And it's just, this is the complexity of a system that you need to accomplish this, this level of heating and cooling. Thankfully, all of that engineering has already been done for you. You don't need to go out. You don't need to figure all this out. These systems, if installed the way that the engineers have designed them, if they're installed the way that they're supposed to be installed, they will automatically just take over, run like they're supposed to. And for some of my accounts that were well installed, or maybe they weren't, but the issues have been corrected, I'm only out there every couple months. These are not high, high need systems because all those valves and whatnot that seem so confusing have purposes. And the system is automatically balancing where the refrigerant is, where it needs to go, what mode it needs to be in, what it needs to bypass to where to maintain pressures and temperatures and move the heat to the, you know, the systems that need it and to defrost the outdoor coil. It's all built in, takes care of itself, and uh, the issues are, are minimal. So, um, those are the characteristics you're going to see on these VRF outdoor systems. And as time goes on, they may add additional features. I know that on Mitsubishi's new end generation, they are having it come standard from the factory for the compressors to have uh, some sort of flash liquid injection, some way to cool the compressors so that when they're running in heating mode with high compression ratios, and they would typically run hot, they can be cooled down and continue to put the heat out without you know, higher wear and tear on the compressors. So it's a wonderful time to be working on these, to be learning. Um, if you're feeling like it's too late to be getting into these, you're wrong. Because the adaptation of these and the, the technology is just barely starting to reach maturity in the USA market. Um, and yeah, it's it's, a great time to be learning about this. 
you have questions about the video or if you you know have content you'd like to see comment below um, if you wanted to catch the first video I'll put a link to that down in the description and uh, until next time my, uh, my name is John and this is VRF Viewpoint thank you